The following is a live broadcast of a Lone Star Community Radio program. Recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Connors FM 104.5, 106.1, and Facebook.com slash IRLoneStar. For more information on this show, please visit our show page at IRLoneStar.com slash shows. To sponsor or donate to this program, visit our donate page at IRLoneStar.com slash donate, or email us at lscrstudios at gmail.com, or give us a call at 936-666-1084. Lone Star Community Radio production and broadcast is possible by folks like you. So sponsor and donate today. You are listening to Lone Star Community Radio on 104.5 KCZW LP Conroe and 106.1 KZCC LP Conroe. And worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Hello, happy Monday. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News, FM 104.5, 106.1 at Lone Star Community Radio in downtown Conroe. It's going to be a good show today. We have... Noskila Gaming with us today, and we have an array of people that I will introduce shortly. Cecily Kelly and Cheryl Bolt will be here talking about the 100-year anniversary of the 19th Amendment, giving women the right to vote, and also Constitution Week, which is coming up soon. And then in the last segment, I have Alex Dang and Ashton Meta, they're the founders of Teach to Learn. It's a student driven program nonprofit to help junior high kids work towards their passion and not just to learn for the test. So it's going to be a great show. And uh, please follow us on Facebook at Conroe Culture News. If you have any questions, we'll go over that during the, um, the time in between the segments, or I'll follow up with you later on. This is also going to be on YouTube. So if you miss any of it, you can hear it again soon. So uh, this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic, and they're located by Conroe High School. Every new patient, it's only $25, and it goes directly back to CASA to help kids um, that are in the, um, in the program. September 3rd will be the first concert of the season. I know that a lot of you look forward to the first Thursday concerts in Heritage Park. And generally that starts in April and goes through September. I say generally because, you know, nothing is as it should be this year so far <laughs> since March anyway. So we've had to cancel every first Thursday, but September 3rd uh, will be the designated first concert of the season. And uh, that will be a great band. It will be a tribute band to the Eagles already gone. So there will be limitations in place, social distancing, masks, all the stuff that you hear for many months, going on six months here now. But it should be a fun time. Um, there will be beer and food truck concessions available. You cannot bring any of the alcohol inside. You can bring picnic baskets. There will also be the first Thursday market. will also be happening from uh, about 5 to 8 p.m. So come early because, like I said, they were only going to take about 50% capacity. Normally that gets about 1,200 people out there for the free concert. So, again, that's September 3rd with the market days. And then there will also be the um, Tribute to Journey Band, Escape, will be September 17th. That's going to be fabulous. And then there's four concerts in October trying to make up for it, you know. So there's going to be Rope in the Wind, a tribute to Garth Brooks, Derek Spence, tribute to George Strait, Bree Bagwell, and then October 29th will be a Christina tribute to the Queen of Tejano. Also, the new, water pa- the new water park in Candy Cane Park has now opened up, and it will be going on uh, through Labor Day. So it's Tuesdays and Thursdays, 1 to 6, Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 6, and then Labor Day, the water park will be open from 11 to 6. If you missed any of this information, you could go to the City of Conroe Parks and Recreation, either their Facebook page or their website, and see the updated information. So with that, we're going to go right into Noskila Gaming. And uh, sitting here with me right now, I have uh, Tony Everett. He's on the far side over there. He's with Community Development. Herb Johnson is with the Tribal Council. No. 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 
with the public relations. Of public the relations. Sorry. I'm going to cross out my notes here. Okay. And then Yolanda is with the tribal council and a tribe member. She's a tribe member. Yes. Tribal she also member. does PR too. I know that for a fact. Anyway, they're going to tell us a little bit about uh, who they are, what they do, and what's going on. So who wants to tell me first? Well, thank you, Margie, on behalf of the Alabama Cushata tribe and the elders and the children. We want, we're thankful to be here for, to represent our tribe to talk about what we're going through. Right now, we are trying to get H.R. 759. It's a bill passed by U.S. Congressman Brian Babin, who introduced this bill, and it was passed on July 24, 2019. This bill will allow us to keep our Noscula gaming to operate on our tribal land. This also involves the other tribe in El Paso, but we're trying to be equally and fair, just like the other tribe in Kickapoo, uh, the Kickapoo tribe in Eagle Pass, Texas, which is south of San Antonio. The, we have a, according to our uh, survey that we did with the Texas Country Partnership, they did a, a survey of 170 million annual income in the economic re region. So we have 700 jobs on the line, not just uh, fan, these are families, and we're trying to be just fair because we are operating an electronic bingo, the same thing these two tribes are doing with the other tribes been doing since 1996, and we just want to be fair and equal. So right now you are told you cannot do electronic bingo, although there is one doing electronic bingo in Kickapoo, the Kickapoo tribe. And right. they're the ones that are uh, south of San Antonio, which doesn't make sense. So there's three tribes, but one can do it and two cannot. Right? Is that the gist that, of it? That's <laughs> true. And bingo has been legal in Texas since 1982. So this bill that's already passed in the House, we need Senator John Cornyn to help get it to the Senate Indian Affairs Committee. Uh, to get this passed this year because during this pandemic, even though we've been closed, the tribe is still paying everybody, including our health care benefits. How do you do that? How do you pay for everybody? Well, they're just the tribe has always done the fair and right thing, and we've said this is about creating jobs and about the regional economic impact. So you know, they're standing by their word, and we need Senator Cornyn's help uh, and Senator Cruz, and so we're asking people to go to DearJohnCornyn.com to uh, show their support. And we have over 70 resolutions in different counties around East Texas and out throughout Texas, people that understand the value of what, what this economic impact is. So we're just trying to let everybody know that this is the time when Senator Cornyn is running for re-election that uh, he needs to address why he's not supporting these jobs. So during this pandemic, which basically started in March and is still going on, you all have not been open. Is That's that correct? correct? That's correct. So normally you do gaming and people go there and they have a good time, but for reasons of COVID, you can't do that. But so essentially you're still paying for things. So and what you've done in the past with your revenues, can you tell me some of the things that you've done, sir? Uh, some of the things that the, the tribe has done, you know, we've uh, reached out and helped out uh, with our own programs, uh, like uh, housing, Indian Health Service. Uh, we have the different structures, and, we, you know, our infrastructure is very old uh, amongst our tribe, and it has able to um, finance and help uh, build new infrastructure for our tribe, helping out with a, a new fire, uh, fire station, uh, maintenance department, forestry department, and just a lot of different programs that uh, that we're not You're able You're like your to own do. city, yes. and you yes. just take care of things. And we're just trying to be self-sufficient, you know, and, and self-determined for our tribe, you know. Like uh, we're saying, um, bingo has been legal in the state of Texas since 1982. Everybody plays bingo. Yes, yes. everybody plays bingo. The veterans play bingo. I yeah. mean, yeah. And it's just part of what in being fair, you know. We just want to be fair and, and treat it in that way, so that's... The reason we're here today and, and to express, you know, our tribe is one of the oldest tribes in the state of Texas. You know, we were a big part of uh, Texas history where we helped Sam Houston. And Sam Houston, with, uh, you know, our help, he granted us land uh, back in the early uh, 1800s. So we've been a very essential part of Texas history. So we're just, you know, just trying to be fair and, you know, be self-sufficient for, for ourselves, for our people. 
Well, and that's the interesting thing. Everything's about history and getting your part done on this show today. And, uh, you know, like I said, we mentioned um, about the 100 year of women being able to vote. Y'all have been there. You're part of history. You're doing your part. Isn't that really what we ask of people is to just jump in and, and take care of themselves? So you've been doing that. You have your own physician as well. Did, did I read that? Yes. yes. Um, and you're helping to pay everybody. So not everybody is part of the tribe that works for you guys, right? Yes. Only um, 30% maybe are tribal members. 70% are from different counties, up to seven counties, including Montgomery County. And so we're very proud of that. We do pay And you're still paying them, even though yes, they're not ex- working? Yes, ma'am. How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're very fortunate yeah, and blessed. Yes, we're very fortunate that our tribe has, you know, built, like we said, you know, $170 million uh, economically, annually. Uh, has been a big push and a big help, you know, not only for our tribe, but everybody in East Texas, Tyler County, Polk County, especially, you know, they're, they're, they're getting this, uh, this help, too, because, you know, we offer, you know, also 700 jobs totally, you know, not only for our tribe, you know, as uh, Yolanda said, you know, 70% or from out of the reservation. So it helps economically uh, for families, especially families. Uh, and, and that's what In it's a large about. way. Yes. Yes. So hopefully you can open again and have your wonderful festivals and, and I want to things that you that, do as you well. Know, the, eco- uh, the unemployment, you know, we, they didn't file for unemployment. So we saved Texas thousands, millions of yeah, dollars. Yeah, that's what I was that. hearing you say. Yes. So you're paying them directly. So I don't really understand why one tribe can do this and two cannot. Does that make sense to you? And no, it does not. That's what this whole thing is about, right? Picking and choosing who our favorites are? <laughs> Something like that? I don't know. So what, what can the public do again? Uh, we're asking people to uh, go on DearJohnCornyn.com and get the information. They can write letters. They can make phone calls. They can show their support. We were seeing over uh, 1,000 people a day through our doors since we opened in May of 16. So uh, we have a lot of people from Montgomery County uh, all around the state that want to see, you know, Noscula open back up and and Mm -hmm. for the tribe to continue to be a great neighbor, which they have. so it's just the fair and right thing to do and that's what we're asking for so you can go to dearjohncornyn.com and get the information Uh, there's also another website called supportactribe.com so uh, and and let senator cornyn senator cruz and and the governor of texas know that they need to address why they're not supporting these jobs Mm -hmm. Uh, i believe there's uh, seven or eight of the team members that live right here in Conroe and in Montgomery County. And well, you need those chambers to help advocate for you as right. well. And yes. I know that's part of your game plan, yeah, yes. we so to, to speak. The, <laughs> yes. We belong to Conroe Speaking Chamber. Games. We have great friends over here. Uh, Mayor Powell, you know, uh, Joey Montgomery at the Montgomery mm-hmm. Historical Society. There's, there's a lot of people that It's all are, about partnerships. It's, and yes. it's just getting this information out uh, to do the right thing and it's the fair thing well a, a lot of people have been to your place and have done the las vegas style casinos and that is still available when you can open right no we're actually class two las vegas casino there's three classes for class one is like ceremonial traditional games that we play on the reservation like stick ball games now class two is what we're doing electronic bingo class three is las vegas style the whole the whole shebang that you you might see in Las Vegas, but we're electronic too. That's what allow us through the National Indian Gaming uh, Organization. They gave us a ordinance in this uh, October eight of two thousand and fifteen, which when we allowed us to open in two thousand and sixteen. So these are if you come to Noscula, you'll see our machines that has a little bingo card, and you're playing bingo. You can change those cards at any time. So this is electronic bingo. But you did do. Las Vegas style casino. Uh, Correct. The tribe, no. The tribe. Am I mistaken? Year, years back in uh, okay. 2000, 2001, did open okay. up, uh, and and that's what. Uh, so when that, you're when you can open, what will be available? The same thing we were offering is, is there's 800 electronic bingo gaming machines. Okay. And but we have a beautiful restaurant. 
Yes, and we'll be following all the guidelines. Right, to is everybody yeah. social distancing and and uh, the proper protocol? But we're getting lots of calls, and and uh, you know we just think there's a lot of out of state special interests that are donating millions of dollars to the Texas politicians, and we need them to support this tribe. Uh, Have you been to Austin about this? Oh, yes. 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 Many yes. times. That doesn't surprise me. <laughs> we were on uh, the lawn and everything. It's all the Texas history, and that's why we're trying to educate people that this is the fair and right thing to do. And uh, there's already a tribe that's been doing it for over 20 years in Texas. So, uh, so what happens if they don't allow it? If they continue to not allow it, what happens? When, when we opened up in... Uh, May of 2016, we invited the uh, state attorney generals to come in, and we took them on a tour and showed them exactly why we were legal at the time. Uh, with the, we had a letter from the Secretary of Interior, and we had the National Indian Gaming Association. Uh, they went back and filed a lawsuit, but but they also issued a order of stay. So that's why how we've been operating. So okay. we are we are open until this is settled in the courts. And well, if we good. could get it passed federally, which is this federal lands, federal tribe, then uh, I think, you know, that would clear up a lot of these the lawsuits, which has been a big waste of money and time. So we need everybody to look at the H.R. 759 bill that's already passed and uh, pick up their phone and call, write, ask the uh, Senator Corn and Senator Cruz and the governor of Texas to do the fair and right thing for this tribe. And, and it's as a, as a tribe, we have been reaching out, reaching out to to the governor, to our senator, and just uh, not long ago, um, our Madam Chairperson uh, Flores, um, we had uh, Cornyn, not too far from us, uh, at a rally, and she approached and said, "Hey, we need your support. We need your support." And he quoted to uh, Chairperson that if it passes the House. I'll come and help you. And we've been waiting for that help because it's now in the Senate, and here we are still you waiting. you got to nudge him again, huh? Yes. We're waiting, so, that, waiting. so that's where we're here, too, <laughs> to ask for support from, from we've, everyone. We've also invited them, Texas lawmakers, to come to our reservation and see firsthand yourself. You know, walk through this property, look through the smiling faces. These are the people that need their jobs. It's not just them. It's for their families. And, you know, some of these people that wrote letters to the congressmen and to the, to the senators, you should read them. They're off of unemployment. They're off of, you know, these benefits that, you know, like SNAP or whatever these programs they have, mm -hmm. Medicare. They're off of these programs because they have mm -hmm. health programs now on our, on our reservation. And for little less. So you're an asset. Yes. Any way you look at yeah, it, you're exactly. an asset. But you can't keep going on like this yes. without your other revenue coming in. And Marjorie, just to tell you, we are um, we've good, been good neighbors since we've been here. Our ancestors came from Alabama before and migrated here, which is now the state of Texas. And as um, Herb said, that Sam Houston has been a good friend to us, and you know we we helped with the runaway scrape in this county, this area, and so they remembered that. And so we're still good neighbors today. And as a matter of fact, during the Hurricane Harvey, we the tribe gave over half a million dollars to different counties to help them and in this county alone I was approached by at a chamber event saying you know you helped our county with 22 families these of these help our families so we so thankful that you you help our community so it, it goes a long way yes I, I I understand and I also noted on here that uh, you did your poll and the majority of people, 76%, roughly, agreed with moving forward on this, yes, right? Yes, correct. So it was Governor Abbott, basically. basically. There's, there's just nobody that, that has wants this place to close down. Whether, whether you play electronic bingo or you play Las Vegas-style games, people are going to go and play. And there, there's lots of folks that are going to Louisiana and that come through our doors that say we don't want to spend our entertainment dollars in Louisiana. No, you want to we keep it in Texas. Keep it in Texas. Definitely. That's the, right. And they're going to Oklahoma. They're going, you know, wherever. So, it's a very popular facility, and it's very. We have a, a no smoking area. We have no alcohol allowed. We we have just uh, a beautiful facility that people love to come to. We get, I got a call right before I came in. You know, people asking when is the tribe going to open back up? 
or when, when they feel like that it's the safe and right thing, then we'll be ready to reopen because we have 400 team members that work on site that are ready to come back to ready work. Ready to roll. They just, came yeah. back just today. Waiting. They came back today to start cleaning up and oh, deep good. cleaning. And so well, we're, maybe the morale's high right now. I think things will be changing soon. It kind of feels that way. I don't know, but it kind yeah. of feels yes, that way. There's yeah. something in the air. I don't know. I, I've been saying a lot of things starting to change in mm -hmm. September. How many tribe members are there? We have 1,360 1, members that live, uh, we have 60% that live on, off reservation, so 40% live on the reservation. Very good. So when is uh, the deadline for this? Is there a deadline? Uh, we need to get the bill passed this year yes. uh, in, the, in the Senate, and then there is a, another uh, court date, I believe in March, March of next year. So right now, we, we need Senator Cornyn's help. And he's Good. out campaigning about how important jobs are. We're just trying to help reinforce these jobs in East Texas do matter. Yes, and it does. And if you get involved, you'll see this is the fair. So right if thing. they go to your Facebook page or your website, will they find information on this yes, to, to make it easier? Will they find yes, information on yes. how to do it, where to go, and so forth? Yes. It tells you all the information. You can go to dearjohnconran.com and also AC, supportactribe.com, and it tells you all the information on how you can reach and, and reach out to uh, Ted Cruz and, and Senator John Conran. Or even alabamacushada.com. Okay, so you can go to alabamacushada.com or naskila.com yes. or your Facebook page. I know you have exactly. a big Facebook page too. Yes, yes ma'am. Okay, very good. Anything else you want to add? No, we just appreciate it. We have lots of friends over here in Conroe. Of course you do. It's great to be here. <laughs> uh, uh. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll be right I'll back with, a, with our next segment, talking about the right to vote and Constitution Week with Cecily Kelly and Cheryl Bolt. We'll be right back. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936 441 9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R O D G E R S S T E I N chiropractic.com. Did you know that there are over 153 million orphans in the world today? The sad reality is 99% of those kids will likely never be adopted. Core Love is an organization right here in Conroe that takes care of orphan children in Haiti, Honduras, and India. We bring the love of Jesus by providing their six basic needs of clean water, proper food, health care, education, job skills, and a loving home. Visit corelove.org, that's C-O-R-E-L-U-V dot org. Will you help defend the orphan? A Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's radio station with talk, music, weather, and traffic for Montgomery County. Have a question or comment about one of our shows? Want to know how to reach a host? Just contact the station at IRLoneStar.com or call in and leave a message at 936-647-3776. Get involved with your community with Lone Star Community Radio. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936 647 3776 to take your first step into the radio world.
And we're back on this second segment, and this is a really important one, too. They're all important today. They're all about history and getting involved and things like that. So I have uh, Cecily Kelly here, and she has a guest that she will introduce. And Cecily is going to tell us about some important things. If you don't know, uh, this month is the 100-year anniversary of the right to vote for women, the 19th Amendment. That's a big deal. Absolutely. That's a really big deal. I mean... You know, it makes you feel a little bit more important if you have a say in things. So, uh, Cecily, who do you have with you? So I have Cheryl Bolt. We're both from the Kashadi Trace chapter of the National Society Daughters of the American Revolution. And Cheryl is our immediate past regent. A regent in DAR terminology is like the president of the organization. <clears throat> and we're here to celebrate a couple of things. First of all, um, DAR was very um, instrumental in the Tell passage. everybody what DAR is. Daughters of the American Revolution. Cheryl? Well, we have uh, two chapters here in Conroe, but there, there are about seven chapters in our general area of Montgomery County. And, uh, of course, it was established back in the 1800s. And we, to be a member of the DAR, you do have to prove a, uh, a, a heritage from a Revolutionary War patriot. And that can, that can mean a soldier, of course, but could, it can also mean someone who supported the American Revolution in some way. So we have uh, hundreds of, of thousands of members and um, it's kind and, of a big an honor. It's a big deal. Well, and, and it isn't easy to get into because at the, the first three generations, you do have to prove birth, marriage and death. And then from there back, it's wills and deeds and newspaper records, grave markings. So where do you get all that from the library? Well, if, if you're lucky, you can get it from the library. A lot of times you have to do a lot of the research yourself. Archives, and churches. I know you're very into that. That's kind of like a real passion history. for you. Yes. Yes. And, it, and it does, you, you do have to be very exact about it. It's not just, you know, uh, according to our family legend or uh, family stories, it does have to you be very exact. Yeah. You, yeah. Have to you have prove to prove it. it. Yes, you but do. more than a million women have proved it, and they've proved it for more than 250,000 patriots and more all the time. And patriots come in all shapes, sizes, colors, and both men and women. In fact, we proved for our chapter this year a a uh, member of the Cherokee tribe whose patriot was a Cherokee woman. So we're very excited about that. Very cool. Very cool. So uh, tell me about uh, how you got involved and what's going on here with uh, the 19th the, Amendment. Yes. <clears throat> so um, celebrating the 19th Amendment is so important because young women today don't understand that women didn't always have the right to vote. You know, my grandparents, my great grandparents, mothers did not have that right to vote. And they don't understand that we didn't all vote at age 18. You know, I'm old enough that I had to wait till I was 21. So those things people don't understand, they take for granted that those things happened. Um, you know, we're celebrating and looking toward September because September 17th through 23rd is National Constitution Week. And it's been celebrated every year since 1956 when President Eisenhower signed into law a resolution passed by Congress naming the 17th to the 23rd as Constitution Day because lots of times we forget how special our Constitution is. It is the oldest in the world that's still functioning for the government. It's also the shortest, which is uh, fairly surprising for most people. Um, and one of the things our chapter is sponsoring this um, month and next month is a bookmark art contest. and. It's available to any child who is in grades K 
kindergarten through fifth, um, and all they have to do is draw their own bookmark on the topic of Constitution or the Bill of Rights, which are the first uh, 10 amendments to the Constitution. And of course, because of this day and age and social distancing, they need to submit a picture of what they have drawn and their information to us um, by email. The deadline is Thursday, September 17th, and the winners are going to be announced on September 23rd. And there are um, two categories, kindergarten through second grade, and then third, fourth, and fifth, and there will be four $25 gift certificates given to the four winners in each category. And the gift certificates are visa gift certificates, so they can be spent wherever, wherever. wherever. the student wants to spend it. Um, so how are you getting this out to them? So we're getting it out through um, our Kashadi Trace chapter and SDAR has a Facebook page. And we're also asking our members to um, share that. Anyone who sees it on their Facebook feed, please share. Um, you know, this is such a challenging year for schools. Mm -hmm. Many more students are at home right now. Mm -hmm. Some of them will be going back on the 8th, and some of them will still continue to stay home. It just depends on what school district parents in, desires what and parents so on. are going to do. Um, it's a new world. It's a, it's a crazy it's a new time. world. I don't have kids in school. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> I'm sure grandkids, you know, the, everything uh, yeah. is different it's, and you don't. I know. You, and you don't know what it's going to be next month. No, and it's, I, it is very sometimes challenging. Sometimes you don't even know what it's going to be next week. <laughs> I know. I know. It's hard to plan things, events, and all of that. So se September 17th, tell me about that. So September 17th is the anniversary of the date that the Constitution was signed, September 17th, 1787. People don't remember often that we had, a, you know, after the revolution, you had 13 colonies that each had a different government, a different tradition, different plans, and they had to somehow work together as a nation. So they started with the Articles of Confederation in 1783. And in just four years, they realized that this wasn't going to work. So they drafted the Constitution. James Madison, who later became President of the United States, and George Mason were instrumental in drafting that. Um, they had a constitutional convention. The oldest um, delegate to that Constitution convention was Benjamin Franklin. He was 81. But it wasn't just old people. And he was the first to sign it. Yes, and it wasn't just old people who were instrumental in writing the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, Jonathan Dayton was only 26. You know, in the Constitution that was drafted, he would have been too young to serve as President of the Republic. You had to be 35. Mm -hmm. So um, it's miraculous that it passed. It had to pass the Constitutional Convention, and then it had to go out to each of the 13 original colonies to be ratified by that colony and, or state now. And in fact, those of you who travel around may have seen that Delaware's license plates say first in the nation, and they say that because they were the first ones to ratify the Constitution. And there is one misspelled word in the Constitution. Oh, my. And it's Pennsyl <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> so uh, in the original document, which is only visible on September the 17th every year at the National Archives, all five pages of the Constitution. That's the only day of the year that, that you can 
see the mistake. See all five pages. <laughs> if it's open, I don't know about this year whether it'll be yeah, open or the National I, Archives is open this year or not. Another activity that we are going to do, uh, we are encouraged uh, by DAR to have a display. And a lot of times in the past, it's been at our Montgomery County Library. This year, we're going to do a Constitution Week display at the new Stockton, Don Stockton Junior High in the library. And we'll set the display up before the students arrive in person on September the 8th and uh, present each one of the social studies teachers with a poster, uh, of the Constitution and uh, and some other items that we're going to present to the library at Stockton Junior High. So we're looking forward to that. It's a beautiful building. So how does some someone get involved in DAR? In DAR, if you uh, we we have our Facebook page. You can also go to Texas DAR. You can go to the national site and Just. put in Texas and put in your zip code and look for the a chapter in find. your area and contact the regent, contact the registrar in that chapter and, uh, and you know, ask about, ask about membership. And the registrar, and Cecily is our registrar, and she's wonderful to help people with their documents because it can be she's overwhelming. She's very easygoing yes, anyway. Yes, And knows the and ins she and outs is a of pro. so many things. She is a pro <laughs> at genealogy. Right. And so she can help she can help uh, people with their application. Yeah. And, um, and any woman in the United States who, who's over age 18 to, you know, 140, um, <laughs> who can trace their lineage back to a patriot or someone who supported the effort to become uh, the United States of America is eligible to join the organization. And it just takes putting together the lineage. And some people grow up with the tradition that they know in their family they have a revolutionary ancestor. And some people are surprised. Um, I volunteer in the genealogy section at the Central Library when it's open. And I have helped people through my volunteer work that didn't know they had a signer of the Declaration it's of Independence. It's pretty cool. Which is really cool. It's so, very cool. Um, you know, I encourage anyone who thinks that they've had people um, in the country for a long time to look at that. Um, one of the other things many people don't know in Texas is that Spain sided against the English and supported the American Revolution. And they passed, the king had a decree that everyone in the Spanish colonies, which at that time included Texas and Louisiana, um, had to pay a tax. And that tax went to support the revolutionary cause. And so if you have, are Hispanic, if you have been in Texas, your family has been here a long time, you may be eligible to join the revolution. Daughters of the American Revolution also. Also, if you're French or of Dutch descent, you, they also helped. And they had huh. cattle drives that um, they rounded up the cattle in Texas, ferried them to Louisiana, and the cattle went to support the Spanish troops who were fighting the British. And so people who can trace their ancestry back to that are also eligible to join the organization. It's fascinating. So, um, stepping back a moment to the uh, 100 year anniversary of the women's right to vote, are you doing anything for that? Do you have any kind of program for that? Um, well, we had a program in May where we had someone impersonate a suffragette um, come and do that. And unfortunately, we're meeting by Zoom, but on Wednesday, we're having a Zoom cocktail hour to support um, the anniversary. Cheers. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so uh, do you know what the last day to register vo to vote is? 
It Am I is, putting you on the spot? I couldn't find it. I, I looked on. I um, believe it's in. It should be elections. In MCTX. Org. I, I want I to say that was it's October relevant. the fifth, but I'm not sure. Okay, they can go to elections. MCTX. Org to find out more information because yes. yes. this is all collectively yes. all about the same thing here. Absolutely, you have the right to vote, and you should register, and you should vote. Absolutely, yes. this is a big election coming up, folks. Yes, in November, we just had the primaries, and uh, this and is the, the next runoff. one. And yes, and the runoffs, uh, July fourteenth. Um, so we have some results from that, but it's it wasn't always. You weren't able to always do this. So no. this is something you want to do. And, you know, it's so funny. I remember back in elementary school, I don't even remember how old I was, but the whole preamble to the Constitution and we the people, and you had to memorize it all. Well, and, so, and I'm a retired uh, history teacher, and, um, and I always had my students memorize the preamble to the Constitution, and they had to individually say it to me. And uh, and we talked yeah. about what the words mean because some of the words are very confusing. So um, what the words mean and to memorize it, absolutely. And we say it at our meetings, yes. and uh, we meet once a month. It's at funny the how they Museum. they trigger and memories. I looked at that and I go, oh my gosh, I still know this. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It yeah. does. In uh, my when my daughters were in elementary school, they were in a play about the Constitution and the preamble, and they learn to sing the preamble. So now when you say to them, they say, stop, and then start singing. <laughs> but but yeah, they know that's it. what I don't you know do. If, if children, students are still memorizing. They don't memorize like they used, like we had to. We right. have some kids coming up here shortly, this special program called Teach to Learn, and uh -huh. they're mentoring uh, junior high kids and workshops and they're in the last segment here, and uh, they talk about, um, goodness, uh, scientific research, computer science, entrepreneur, uh, competitive math. I don't know where history is, speech and debate, but I'm sure it's in there somewhere and well, to follow their passion. But I think this wonderful. is uh, very fascinating. Uh, September 17th, um, Constitution Day, Citizenship Day, that's when people get brought in to yes. be Americans, yes. right? Yes, yes. Yes, the naturalization and the DAR, ceremonies. Um, and distributes at um, naturalization ceremonies copies of the Constitution and the Bill it's of Rights. It's a big deal. Yeah. It's a real big deal. Okay. So I saw that there's uh, 2020centennial.org is a place to look for things about the women. Do you have another website that you would um, like to refer so to? There's a great deal of information at uh, www.dar.org. Okay. All right. I'll add that to uh, the Facebook page. Anything else you would like to add? Well, the main, uh, the, the DAR, uh, our three objectives are always patriotism, education, and our history to maintain and remember and honor those that came before us. So that's, you know, our serv we, we perform service in the area and service uh, on an nationwide basis but patriotism historical and education historical preservation wonderful so, well thank you all as you're sitting behind the texas flag right absolutely. there <laughs> the whole mural so absolutely. thank you and certainly uh, the texas state constitution was um, formed um, as a result of the american constitution thank you ladies for educating us and I look Thank forward you. to another Thank conversation you. soon. Maybe we'll do something again next month. Okay. All right. Absolutely. Thank so, you so uh, much. We're going to take us. a quick break. And this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. We'll be right back. Does your company have needs that can be met by an employee who is dependable, hardworking, enthusiastic, motivated, cooperative, respectful, and punctual? Conroe Independent School District at Special Education Department can meet your needs by connecting you with potential employees that have been preparing for a lifetime of employment. We have numerous individuals seeking paid and unpaid work experiences. If your company is interested in seeing how we can meet your business needs, call Conroe ISD Special Education Department to find the best employees for you at 936-709-7671. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic 
has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936 441 9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R O D G E R S S T E I N chiropractic.com. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for a summer internship, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to learn the radio and TV business. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world. Hey, y'all. It's DJ Mike from Dance Simon, Texas. Join me Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. as I count down the top 10 Texas Red Dirt songs that are packing the dance floor. I'll be featuring local artists and the story behind the hits, shows in the area, as well as new songs that make you want to dance. It's Dance Time in Texas with DJ Mike on Lone Star Community Radio, 104.5 KCZW and 106.1 KZCC, Conroe, Texas, or online, IRLoneStar.com. Hello, and we are back for our last segment of the day, and I am here with Ashton Meta yes. <laughs> and Alex Dang. They're the founders. There were two other founders, correct? Yes. Okay, so there's four of you, but two of you are here today. Uh, teach to Learn, and you can find out more about them by going weteachtolearn.com. It's a student-led organization, nonprofit organization that helps students find their passion. What does that mean exactly? Tell me about that. Yeah, so uh, basically, a couple years ago, um, me, Ashton, and Armand and Michael, the Push two the microphone other, towards you. Yeah. Push the microphone. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, so uh, a couple years ago, me and Ashton, along with Armand and Michael, came together with this common mission to essentially improve on the education system for younger students. And one thing we all had in common is that uh, when we were in junior high school or middle school, um, there was very little emphasis put on thinking about, you know, what kind of clubs do we want to do in high school? Where do we, where do we want to major in? What do we want to major in in college? What kind of career do we want to take? And a large part of that is because very, a lot of, very little emphasis was put on, you know, finding your passion early on. And what that means to us is essentially finding which topic or field that you're really interested in and pursuing so that, you know, you can feel like you have more of a uh, mission and advantage and yeah. a goal towards reaching, that, reaching whatever goal you're going towards. So what essentially we did is we wanted to create an organization that essentially introduced different passions to younger students at an earlier age before high school so that as soon as they reach high school, they can essentially take that, pa take that passion running and essentially just continue on improving on whatever they're interested in at that moment. How mm -hmm. do you do that, Ashton? Yeah, so like Alex said, when we were both in uh, freshman and sophomore year, we realized like, okay, the common core school curriculum is more focused on just uh, bare academics instead of actual like uh, these passions and these career applicable topics and we realized in addition like a lot of the core curriculum in this like sort of lecture format in the school is not very engaging or interactive and it's not very inspiring which is something that we really want to focus on so what we did when we were thinking about how exactly are we going to introduce these career applicable passions in the most effective way is that uh, we realized workshops and promoting that like interactive and engaging element was probably the most effective way to do that. And like Alex said, you know, even when we started the organization, of course, you had we had like a year of failures and pivots, but we found that um, we found that spark in, in in doing these workshops, and that really led us to the most success. And um, you know, pretty much ever since then, that's kind of what we've been focusing on: doing these workshops, creating resources that really promote that interactive and engaging element. When did you start this? Uh, around so the organization itself was founded when we were sophomores so around two years ago so two years ago yeah yeah so lessons learned you said you've pivoted mm -hmm. you've changed things all of that mm -hmm. what do you do in the workshops right so uh, basically how workshops work is okay so um currently we have five running workshop series we have speech and debate 
entrepreneurship, computer science, competitive math, mm -hmm. and one more. Uh, public speaking. Public sp we already did speech and debate. And destination imagination. And des uh, did you say that one? Yeah. Yes. That no, one sounds the intriguing. Destination imagination. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but essentially, yeah, we have a wide range of topics, and um, you know, yeah. I, I yeah. So um, basically, <laughs> for each of these workshops, how it, how it basically works out is during like the first, I guess, 10, 15 minutes, we start out with a short PowerPoint or curriculum, introducing the different topics that we want to talk about on that specific specific workshop. And then we start segueing into more interactive activities and group discussions, more focused on getting those kids personally and individually involved on um, you know, completing a certain task related to So they that. do hands-on projects. Yeah, very very hands-on. Yeah. So they can see if that's where their passion is. Is yes, that exactly. what you're saying? So for example, in like the entrepreneurship workshop, I think the first activity that we did was that uh, we sort of introduced ourselves and sort of the whole uh, idea around entrepreneurship and then right away, uh, we had them start pitching different objects to us. So for example, I gave them a pencil. I said, uh, sell me this pencil. And that really got them enga uh, engaged and uh, within the whole uh, activity. And they started ha having to think creatively. Uh, and it was pretty much a whole new mindset which they had to take on. And a lot of them found that really engaging and fun. Um, so, you know, they had a uh, really good it time with that them. workshop. Yeah. So you guys seem very excited and passionate <laughs> about this. What yes. drives your passion? Right. So... Um, in terms of, you know, with my inspiration behind, you know, this was because, like, for a long time, like, my drive was not necessarily, my, like, what I was interested in. It was more about, you know, I, I, I perceived success as the, the grades I got, the awards or recognitions I received. But as I got into, like, high school, I kind of realized that's not what success is about. Success is more about what do you enjoy doing and how well, you can, how well can you do in that specific topic. It's for internal. Me, yeah, mm -hmm. it's internal. For me, that is entrepreneurship and computer science. Um, I'm really into those two topics. I do everything I can in high school and outside of high school to essentially pursue those topics. And in doing so, especially with entrepreneurship, I do my best to create things, initiate things that can also spread passions and also inspire other people in the way that I was inspired um, through being introduced to entrepreneurship and computer science. Yeah. But when you're passionate about something, it shows. Yes. Your emotions, it shows emotionally, right. and it's contagious. Right. Totally agree. And that, I think that's a, that's a really big part of why uh, we think our organization could be very successful. Well, I personally believe right now it's successful, but even more, in, even more so in the future, because this whole idea of inspiration is actually something I'm passionate about, and that's something the whole organization itself promotes, right? Uh, what's interesting is that when we were founding this organization, like I said, we had uh, two older sort of peers that started with us and they're kind of role models to me and they really inspired me a lot throughout this entire journey and um, I, I found that really like I, I mean I guess I've only lived 16 years but that was life-changing for me <laughs> it was um, very motivating yeah it was very motivating yeah. and I seek to especially through this organization uh, inspire a lot of younger students the same way that uh, those older two peers inspired me and I think doing this through introducing different career applicable passions uh, is a perfect means and way to do so so you're involved in several junior highs. Yes. And uh, what does that involvement look like? And how do the students get involved, especially like now? Yeah. <laughs> so um, before COVID hit, um, we were we were doing we were doing in-person workshops every week at three different junior high schools. It was York Junior High, Knox Junior High, and McCullough Junior High. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how when like every week we would go to their school after their school hours, essentially, you know, set up workshops there and teach their kids for an hour after school on these different topics. But of course, when COVID hit, um, in-person workshops were no longer safe and we could no longer, you know, conduct those. So we spent a large portion of our summer um, basically expanding um, organization and trying to basically adapt to an online setting. And what that looked like is we got a team, we got a larger team together, uh, split up, split up the work between, you know, um, this team will be sp specifically focused on developing curriculum for this online workshop and then this online workshop and this online workshop, right? Very organized. Yeah. <laughs> it's very impressive. It's something you learn throughout the whole entire process, especially when you're starting an organization. Uh, and this is something I think is very important is you have to stay very, very organized and you have to have very, very clear communication within your team. So like Alex was saying, uh, when the whole COVID thing hit, we had to essentially pivot our entire, uh, our entire operations. And, you know, that meant... Um, even if we want to expand during the summer uh, with all this COVID stuff going on, we have to 
expand in, in, a, in an organized fashion and make sure all the tasks are delegated correctly. And uh, yeah, we eventually made it happen after yeah. networking with a lot of different schools and communicating with a lot of different people in our community. And we had our uh, really successful summer uh, online workshop series program. That's exciting. Yeah. So you're a nonprofit organization. Organization. <laughs> so you went through that process of becoming a nonprofit, mm-hmm. which is not easy. I've done that before. <laughs> Um, and I'm assuming you need funds too. Maybe, um, maybe not. Maybe you're self-sustainable. As of now, yeah. we're completely volunteer, uh, okay. volunteer driven. And so far we haven't had the need for funds because all of our stuff is generated by our mentors, people, who, other high school students like us who have joined our organization and decided, okay, they also want to, you know, work with our mission and build up curriculum. So yeah, that's, everything's pretty much mentor driven and not, um, so far we haven't, uh, monetary yeah. yeah so have you ever worked with education for tomorrow actually um we've that, we've we've had could be a good partnership <laughs> it, it actually would so over the summer what happened is that uh through our school they introduced sort of like a, a mentorship program with a lot of the uh, students in our school so we use that opportunity to um you gain some of those guys as like our mentors uh, throughout this entire process, and we gain a lot of valuable advice and sort of mentorship from their side. I'll email you how to mm-hmm. connect with uh, Education for Tomorrow. I think yeah. there could be a good partnership that she could help you yeah. as well, you know, and maybe you could help her. She probably learned from <laughs> you guys. You guys are amazing. So if that somebody wants to get involved, uh, they're a student or, yeah. you know, somebody else is listening to this, How? what's the best way to get involved? Yeah, so... Um, so far, uh, we plan to start workshops on the week of September 21st for the fall uh, for the fall and winter semester, I guess. Okay. Um, and how that's going to work is we'll be sending out forms and registration material to different to all the schools and principals at the schools to to, to essentially send it out to as many students as possible. Um, we will also be posting all that information on our website. Where you, um, anyone here listening can also go on the website and we teach to learn dot com. We teach to learn dot com. Yes. And another valuable resource is, is our Instagram, which also has a lot of updated information. That's at official teach to learn, um, yeah. and that's probably another way to do it. And one thing I also want to uh, mention is that for those looking to get involved, uh, you don't necessarily have to only be interested in the stuff that we already offer. Um, I think this is a great opportunity for you to take your individual passions and talents and through our organization, create that into a workshop and inspire the next generation within our community. So, Very yeah. good. I appreciate learning from you guys. You're so advanced. You're advanced <laughs> in a you. lot more than a lot of adults that I know. So I wish you well. I think it's a great program. I'm glad Thank that you. you could come on here and share this. And uh, later on, when you get it rolling, let's come back again and talk about it. How's yeah, sure. that sound? Sure. Yeah, for sure. That would be great. Thank you okay. so much for having Thank us. you, guys. Thank you. That Thank wraps you. our show up for today. Uh, a lot of great information. So if you missed it, the link will be posted, the YouTube link later, or you can go back on anytime to uh, Conroe Culture News at Facebook. So thank you all very much. This is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. Today's show was recorded and broadcasted live on IRLoneStar.com, Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1 and all rights and ownership are reserved to Lone Star Community Radio. For more information regarding this program and Lone Star Community Radio, visit us online at IRLoneStar.com. Lone Star Community Radio is Montgomery County's community radio station, serving the community with local programming on TV, radio, and online. If you enjoyed today's program, please support us by sponsorship or starting your own show. Contact us today by phone or text at 936-666. 1084 or email the station at lscrstudios at gmail.com.